No? Sure. Thank you. Give sure enough. Have a seat for me, please. Now, if we come around and we take our thoracic spine, we've already done it basically with you guys seated. I can actually take my hands, are hopefully not too cold for you. I want you to take a big breath in for me, please. And out. And what I want to do is I want to feel, as my client breathes in and out, I want to feel that motion that occurs. And I can do this seated, breathe in and out. Or, onto your back, please. Or I can do it supine. In this case, as we go through the lower ribs, we want to be in this mid, uh, this mid axillary line. So I've got my hands through this whole region and I'm feeling the motion occurring through that area. And I can do the same through this pump handle motion of upper ribs, breathe in and out. And I'm looking for that symmetry in motion. If we're looking at, if we're doing it on the female and you don't want to just grab them on the breast like that, um, I don't know how well you know them. No, I'm not going to add the paper to in truth, okay? It doesn't have to be true. You can just take your fingers and go just lateral to the sternum and do exactly the same thing and feel that motion as we go through the upper ribs because you're going to feel the sternum raise. That's the first thing. You want to feel for that movement. You're going to get an idea of where motion is occurring and where it stops because that's what we're going to go back to. Can I get one down, face down? <coughs> Sorry, Rob, I'm not going to do the shoulder. Just <laughs> the other thing that I would often do, and this is, uh, if you've been to an osteopath, you've been to a physio, you've been to any number of people, they will do something similar, or they may do something similar, just to feel this is both an assessment and I can move into a treatment. All I'm doing at the moment is feeling for motion occurring through the thoracic spine. And I'm going to get a good idea of where movement occurs and where it doesn't occur. If we go into our, this area through here, so as we go out from our thoracic spine, our spinal uh, spine processes and go lateral, we will feel the angle of the ribs. You need to know these angles of the ribs and know exactly where you are because that would also be a general articulation that I would do for a client. It is both assessment, feeling, okay, how much spring is in this area? These are synovial joints. This is the rib cage. There's a hell of a lot of elasticity in here. So, how much elasticity is there? Does it spring? Or is there an area where it is distinctly restricted in movement? And that's what I'm going to consider. I'm going to look at, is the rib moving? When my client inspires, does it move up? Do we get that lateral movement? Do we get that pump handle movement through the ribs? If it is not moving into full inspiration, then it's restricted, it is being held down, and we need to move it. If it is raising but not coming down, then it's the opposite. It's being held up, it's in an inhaled position, it's elevated and we need to move it down. I'm going to be very naughty and I'm going to just demonstrate a couple of things and I might run through these again later if we have time. On to your back for me, please. There's enough here. So, I mentioned pec minor, ribs three to five. I mentioned serratus anterior, I know it goes from rib one, but in particular ribs six to nine, lat dorsi for the lower ribs, 10, 11 and 12. These are ribs that we're going to take into, uh, to help us to inspire a depressed rib, we're trying to move it. This can be done. The B, being a position, you were on shoulder issues at all? No. No? Good. So this is the skull and the uh, position. Right? <laughs> so it's just hand on the back of the 
because I'm going to use the elbow, I'm going to use the forearm when I'm doing this. As an osteopath, I'm used to reaching across and being very comfortable with my clients. So all I'm doing is I'm going, I know where I am on my body, by the way, because we know that the scapula covers how many ribs, roughly? Someone say seven. Seven. So what I'm going to do is effectively get into that. So I can roll. Can you just roll this way, just a fraction? So I'm going to get into the rib angles quite high and cover that area. And I'm going to go lateral and caudal that way. So that way and that way. Down. From here, I'm going to get my client to take a big breath in and hold it. And if I use pec minor, I want you to push your elbow into me. And we'll do this for three to five seconds at least, as a muscle energy technique, and relax. And allow things to move back. You notice I've got little movement through that area already. But we're using pec minor to move this rib into inspiration. It's being held down. We need that traction on, on the rib angles. And then breathe in. Hold, push towards me, activating through pec minor, and relax. As we move down, I can move down to our ribs six, seven, and eight, six to nine, I should say. This time, I'm going to get my client to do exactly the same thing with their arm. Well, I'm going to do exactly the same thing with the ribs. Lateral motion, caudal traction on the ribs, and breath in because we need that inspiration. Hold the breath, push your whole arm. This time we're activating serratus anterior. And relax. And I can go down further. Go down 10, 11 and 12. Breathe in. Hold your breath. This time I want you to abduct. It's actually an action really good. And that's lap dorsi. And relax. So we're helping them up the rib to move into inspiration. It's been held down. We need to figure out which one it is, the highest rib in particular, and we're going to treat that. Our opposite, so if the rib is being held up and it is not depressing, it is not going into exhalation, we are going to use and respiratory technique again, but this time we're not going to use activation. Let me just move your head for me, please. Now, just let your arm rest there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find my rib. This is the lowest one that isn't moving. We've done this in our assessment, and I'm going to take my client into lateral motions. Side bend with a little bit of flexion. And I'm going to look for movement occurring at the rib in particular and stop at that point. I want you to take a big breath in, all the way out. And I'm going to follow it into expiration. Hold the breath. Now, just a gentle inspiration for me. And I'm going to resist that movement and out. And I'm going to add side bend and follow it into exhalation. Breath again in, hold it, it's gentle action and all the way out. And then we turn that client to our neutral position. We can do exactly the same thing as we go into our upper ribs. So through here, head down. This time I'm going to contact anteriorly the pump handle and I'm going to introduce more flexion and a bit of lateral rotation. Big breath in for me. We're holding the superior aspect of the rib all the way out. Introduce that flexion and resist as they breathe in and out. And as they go into relaxation, expiration, I'm going to follow the rib. You need to do that two or three times and it should come at motion and keep quite well. So I realise that uh, hopefully I have a little bit more time to cover a few other things. I've missed out on, on ribs one and two, on purpose by the way. 
So what we'll do is we'll talk, we'll continue the discussion later on as we go into the cervical region. But I think you can do this time now. Thank you very much, Stuart, for, uh, for that. Thank you.